Hi, welcome to Filmizer. Today, I'm going to explain about an American science fiction movie called Next. The film opens by showing Frank in a diner, sitting at the bar. He wears a watch on his left arm and looks at the watch hanging on the diner's wall. He presses a button on his hand watch, and turns around to look outside. He sees nothing. Next, we see Frank getting on a stage, and performing as a stage magician. The announcer introduces him like a magician who knows what you will do before you do it. Frank walks up to a table, and gets a beautiful young lady on the stage. The lady is wearing a necklace, and Frank says that her necklace will fall into her drink, in a couple of seconds. And so it happens. At the same time, Kelly and her partner Kavanaugh, are watching him. He asks if she is serious about this guy, and wonders why they are following clowns around. Frank leaves the stage, and walks to a casino. In a voiceover, he narrates that most magicians are fake, but some of them are the real deal. He also says that on Wednesday nights, he does not make much money, so he goes gambling. But he keeps it simple, and only plays against machines, and does not make large bets. That way, he can keep coming back. Finally, he reveals that he can literally watch what is going to happen in the next two minutes. But he is not a god, and can't predict the general future. He can only see what will happen to him. The casino's security is watching over Frank's table, while he is playing blackjack and they recognize him as a magician. They wonder if he is pulling tricks on them. They speak on the radio, and tell some security guards to go to his table. Frank knows what's coming, and gets up from the table. In another voiceover, he says that the thing with the future, is that it changes. And it changes, because you looked at it, which makes it unpredictable. On his way, Frank sees the short-term future, and a guy who attempts robbery, and shoots two people with a gun. Back to the present, Frank prevents that guy from carrying out his plan, and disarms him. The casino security goes after Frank, but he remains calm, and manages to evade all of them. When he exits the casino, the security calls the police, and a couple of patrol cars go after Frank. But again, Frank can't be caught. Back at the casino, Kelly is reviewing the footage from the casino's cameras, and comments that Frank knows exactly what he is doing. She has been watching him for two months, and he always finds a way out. The police chief tells her that a bomb has been stolen, and they should put every agent looking for it, instead of going after some paranormal wizard. Kelly tells him that this man does statistically impossible things, and if they get him, maybe they can use his abilities. The chief gives Kelly a five-day window, to get to him, and walks away. Frank drives his stolen car into a garage, where an old man named Irv, is waiting for him. They play some pool, and Frank talks about the diner. Irv asks if the watch turned back in time, but Frank says he didn't notice. In the meantime, Kelly is analyzing Frank's moves, and comes to the conclusion, that Frank must be watching at least one minute and a half, ahead in the future. Frank predicts that the police will shortly come in, and Irv tells him to run. Frank says he wants to see what they want, and waits. Kelly walks in alone, and asks for his help to find that nuclear bomb. Frank says it doesn't work that way, but Kelly tells him, that he will either help her out, or he will be arrested. The police comes in. Frank returns to the present, and runs away. The next day, Frank is back at the diner, and marks the time. The woman has been waiting for Liz, walks in and gets a table. Shortly, her ex-boyfriend walks in as well, and starts harassing her. Frank takes a peek into the future and decides what the best course of action would be. He interrupts her ex-boyfriend's mumbling, and he stands still, in order to get punched. He introduces himself as Chris, which is his real name, and says that his car was stolen. Liz offers to give him a ride. In the car, they have a talk about destiny. Liz says, she does not know if destiny is a real thing, and she does not really want to know. Life should be a surprise. Chris says, that would be nice. Back at the diner, Kelly and Kavanaugh, are questioning two of the employees. The employees reveal that Chris visited the diner every day at the same time, and ordered a martini while waiting. That was until today, when he met with that woman, and they left together. Kelly and Kavanaugh walk out, 
and they have some information that some other people are after Chris as well. Indeed, we get to see the bad guys who are having a part of the bomb delivered to them. They speak about Chris and they say they need to get him. At night, some construction workers are trying to clear the road of the mountain rocks and tell Chris and Liz that they can't drive any further until the morning. They tell them to drive back to a motel nearby. Chris and Liz visit the motel, and get into a room. Liz will sleep in the room, while Chris will sleep in the car. At the FBI headquarters, Kelly and Kavanaugh have spotted Chris. The chief calls everybody, and says they have a code read about the nuclear bomb. Kelly says that this point in time is critical, and they need to direct all of their resources towards arresting Chris. They know where he is and they can get him. The bad guys notice that the police are mobilizing, and they order their people to follow the police cars. They will lead them to Chris. Back in the motel, Liz walks out of the shower, and Chris gazes at her. He comes up with a magic trick, and burns a paper into a flower. He gives her the flower, and they kiss. They become intimate with each other. When they are finished, they are laying together, into each other's arms. Liz says that maybe there is such a thing as destiny after all. Kelly and Kavanaugh are watching the motel. They see Liz walking out of there, and Kelly says, they should give her a head start. Liz walks into town, and Kelly with Kavanaugh parks their car near her. Kelly introduces herself as an agent, and wants to have a talk with her. Liz gets in the car, and Kelly shows her the footage from the casino. She tells Liz that Chris used her to escape from Las Vegas. He is a sociopath, but a powerful one, because he can see two minutes into the future. Kelly asks for Liz's help. She gives her a narcotic pill, and tells her to slip it into Chris's drink. But she has to do it two minutes before she gets Chris out of the room. Liz agrees to help them, and returns to the motel room. When Chris gets into the bathroom to shave, Liz prepares some breakfast, and slips the pill into Chris's juice. Chris comes out, and hugs her. He takes the juice and he's ready to drink it. Liz can't stand that to happen, and stops him, telling him everything that happened a few moments ago. She asks Chris if it's true, and Chris admits it. He tells her about the incident in the casino, and proves that his abilities are real, by predicting what the television will be broadcasting when he switches to the next channel. He tells Liz, that he does not know how it works, but it does. He was born with it. Liz asks him, if he has been using his ability on her, and set her up. Chris says no. He tells her, that he saw her before he actually saw her, in real life. That's why he has been waiting in that diner for her, until she finally appeared for real. Chris tells her, that the police wants his help, but he can't really help them. Liz tells him that he was able to expand his abilities, when it came to her, and Chris says the police does not know that. Chris devises a plan, so he and Liz can both escape, but things go sideways. Chris gets arrested, because of his good heart, since he couldn't let Kelly die. To make matters worse, Liz is kidnapped by the terrorists. Kelly takes Chris to the FBI headquarters, and tells him that he has no choice, but to help them. She makes him watch the news, and tells him to push himself as hard as he can, and see where the nuclear bomb will detonate. But instead of that, Chris sees that Liz has been kidnapped, and they will place her on the roof of a parking lot, while wearing a vest full of explosives. He sees a reporter covering the action, and the explosives detonate, killing Liz. Chris tells Kelly, that he can't work like that, and begs her to set him free. Kelly orders a couple of men to guide Chris to his cell, but Chris is able to escape. He escapes the headquarters, and runs all the way to that parking lot roof. Kelly catches up with him, and asks him why he came here. Chris tells her that they got Liz, and they are going to execute her. Chris and Kelly devise a new plan. Chris walks out to the roof, so the sniper of the terrorists can spot him, and shoot him. Things go on as planned, and Chris pretends he is dead, while the police kills the sniper. Kelly says that the terrorists will now think Chris is dead, and they can use that to their advantage. Chris says that no matter how many possible scenarios he runs into his mind, Liz always ends up dead. They have to do something else. 
Chris pushes himself hard, and looks further into the future, until the moment when the terrorists bring Liz to the roof, in a white van. He is able to see the license plates, and tells Kelly about it. The police is able to spot the van, and Chris lays out, yet another action plan. He and the police will have to go to the docks, and get to Liz, before they take her to that roof. Chris helps the police navigate through the docks, and they eliminate most of the terrorists. Only three of them remain, and they take Liz into a ship. Chris helps the police once more, and they are able to take them out, one by one, and save Liz. Kelly says they are not done yet, and they need to find the nuclear bomb. Chris says that he made a mistake about the bomb. It is going to explode now. The bomb explodes, and kills them all. Chris wakes up back in the motel, holding Liz into his arms. He gets up, and gives Kelly a call. He says he will help her find the bomb. But they need to leave Liz out of it. Kelly agrees on that. Chris wakes Liz up, and tells her, there is something he needs to do. Something that he can't put off any longer. She asks him if he is going to be back, and Chris replies yes. Chris waits for Kelly, and another voiceover of his, reminds us that when you look into the future, the future changes. Kelly pulls with her car to pick him up, and they drive away together. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Thanks for watching.